Welcome to this talk on rule-based method for retrofitting convention, conventional processes with integrated units. My co-authors are Eduardo Perez Cisneros from Mexico, Mario Eden from USA, and myself, Rafa Gulgani from Denmark. The problem I, we are going to discuss in this presentation is how to select a base case define targets for improvement for the base case and find alternatives that match the targets. The base case is represented uh, in this diagram on the left by the green boundary and alternatives are supposed to be inside the boundary. So by definition, they will be better. And the objective is to find alternatives for which at least two of those vertices are significantly better and all the others can be the same as the base case, but never crossing the green boundary. And the means to achieve these alternatives, there are different ways to get them. What we are concentrating on in this presentation are new equipment that is intensified equipment integration or hybrid operation. So the three intensified operations we are going to consider are reactive distillation, dividing wall column, or hybrid distillation. What is common in each of the three intensified process alternatives? Compared to the original process, each intensified option is slightly or significantly better than uh, with respect to at least two performance criteria that we discussed in the previous slide and not worse in any other. And the issue is how to find the reference process for which one of these three intensified alternatives can be used. So which is the process where they can be applied. The method is very simple. We have three steps. The first step, we apply a set of rules to find the answers. If the answers are yes, then we use in step two, the basic design to design the alternative. And in step three, we analyze and tar use some targets to improve the design. And we assume that the design methods for step two and three are available. So what are the rules? In each case, there are seven rules, or in another way, we can put seven questions for each type of intensified operation and the answer needs to be yes for each of those. If the answer is yes, then it means one of the three types can be applied. And then we apply steps two and three. I will go through the questions and the answers uh, with the examples uh, of each case. So let's take the first case, reactive distillation. Reactive distillation commonly Chemical processes where there is a reactor followed by separations, usually distillations. These kind of processes that you see on the left can be converted into a reactive distillation. So let's look at the seven questions and the answers. <clears throat> so is the reaction that is taking place exothermic? Yes, it needs to be exothermic. So it will generate vapor. Is there only one reaction? Yes, but if there is more than one, it can also be handled. Does the reaction and separation involve liquid and vapor phases? It needs to be yes. So we have liquid and vapor phases in the reactive distillation. Does the separations involve azotropes or close boiling pairs? Yes, because then the incentive to use reactive distillation would be there. Does the separations involve three or more products? Yes then we can do the separations and see what happens. But if there are more than two products coming out of the system, then uh, extra separation may be needed. Are high purity products desired? Yes, there's the incentive to, to use reactive distillation. Are there energy intensive separations or waste issues? Yes, then there's the incentive to use reactive distillation. Then if answers are yes, all the answers are yes, we have a reactive distillation. <clears throat> and the questions that you see are the design answers. 
that is what is the condenser duty, how many stages are needed for the non-reactive stages above the reactive zone, <clears throat> how many stages are needed for the reactive zone, how many stages are needed below the reactive zone for the non-reactive stages, and what is the revolved duty. If we answer all these questions and find values for them, and it's a feasible reactive distillation design, by definition, it will be better than the original process. So what we are looking for is then, which is the process which satisfies these seven answers? And then to verify that the reactive distillation is in fact better. Here is a new example that we have not published before. We have methylene chloride uh, production from methanol and hydrochloric acid. All the details of the process can be found in the literature. <clears throat> we have taken these uh, details and performed the simulation and matched the design. And since all the answers are yes to the seven questions, we know that a reactive distillation, if it can be configured, will be significantly better. So the reactive distillation uh, design consists of two parts. First, reduction of this flow sheet to a reactive distillation configuration and then designing the reactive distillation. So the reduction of the flow sheet is simple. Two unit operations uh, can be combined through the phenomena that are occurring. And they need to be adjacent to each other. So the reactor followed by the first distillation column can be combined. Once they are combined, then the second distillation can, uh, column can be combined, and then the third. But if there are two products coming out of the third, then we may need to keep that separate because uh, one reactive distillation will have two products. So based on this, we design the reactive distillation column, and the third distillation column is a separation unit, a distillation. <clears throat> and we can see already from the results of this that the reboiler duty for the reactive distillation column is much lower and the combined reboiler duty of the two columns is much lower than the base case. And we can replace the second distillation column with a membrane unit and also the combined reboiler duty is much better. And also the product purity is better. So we have achieved significant improvement through intensification. And we managed to find out very quickly for the given flow sheet, whether the process uh, intensification was possible. The second is hybrid. We know that chemical processes uses this, uh, a lot of energy and distillation, as you can see in the figure, uses most of the energy. Now distillation is a very efficient, uh, technique to separate, but until a uh, purity. And we can see that in that figure, that cutoff point of purity is point A. Until that point A, the distillation is very good. But in order to go from point A to point B, it uses 80%, nearly 80% of the total energy required for that separation. So then the idea of the hybrid is can we use distillation until point A and replace distillation from point A to B with something else that requires less energy, for example, membrane. And this is the configuration then for the hybrid. We have the distillation until point A, so the reboiler duty will be reduced. And then we put a membrane where the heavy boiling compound is the permeate, so the flux for the membrane is reduced and we still get the same product purity that we wanted. What is the consequence of this? Let us look at the design. And uh, let's take an example. Here is a separation process that can be found in many petrochemical refinery processes, separation of uh, hydrocarbons. The two columns, shaded columns use a lot of energy so we can take any of those and we can answer the seven questions. Are high purity products obtained as distillate? Yes, 
Does the host column have one feed and two products? Yes. Is the separation difficult? Yes, the more difficult, the more incentive to use uh, a hybrid operation based of, on cutoff uh, equation is uh, the potential saving 20%. It can be easily seen uh, from the figure that it would be. And the remaining questions are also yes. So if all these questions are yes, then we can convert this flow sheet and take each of these uh, distillation columns, the shaded columns, into the short-term solution of hybrid scheme. We are not considering the long-term solution of totally replacing the distillation column because those kind of membranes we need to find first. This is a win-win situation because we are combining two columns, two separation techniques at their highest efficiency. Savings of 10 to 50% can be achieved compared to the single column considering that there are at least 100,000 operating distillation columns on earth, the scope and significance is very large. And this also can be seen from the fact that most of the energy intensive uh, distillation operations are, are using hydrocarbons. And therefore, if we, if we consider only the hydrocarbon separations, we can make a big impact in the energy savings. And here are some examples that we have already performed for which we have provided the uh, verified solutions. So the next one, we go to a dividing wall column. We again have a process because of confidentiality, we cannot show the actual process, but it's separating of hydrocarbons. One feed giving five products, we can synthesize and the superstructure of all alternatives will give us 184 alternatives. But if we take only the distillation, that is the vapor liquid separations, this is the sequence that is the optimal. Now on this optimal, we will try to see using the rules, whether dividing wall column can be used to advantage. So here is the original process. We want to use a dividing column, which looks like this. These are the questions. And again, the answer to all these questions is yes. So we know that at least two of the adjacent columns can be replaced by this uh, dividing wall column. So these are the, again, the four uh, column flow sheet. The dividing wall column would be used for replacing two of them. The actual dividing wall column looks like uh, the figure on the top left, <clears throat> but for simulation purposes, the two dividing, uh, the two sections of the dividing wall column are arranged in a petliuk column configuration. So now with this petliuk column configuration, we can see that we can take the two middle, we can take the two on the left, we can take two on the right, or we can take two, uh, dividing wall column. So there are different alternatives. Which one is the best? We can enumerate and do the calculations. And the calculations also needs uh, some uh, calculations or verifications by simulation, uh, requires some extra um, notice to take. And this is that the streams S7 and S8, that is the liquid from the top of the second column going to the first and the vapor from the bottom of the second column going to the uh, first column. Those flow rates need to be carefully controlled in order to get the optimal solution. And so we configured the second column. We put a controller optimizer to control the flow rates connecting the second column with the first column. And if we have liquid and vapor flows with all the, within all the columns, then there should not be any problem. And then we find out that for this specific process, the best configuration is to convert the first two columns into a dividing wall column. We get 45% energy demand reduction compared to the original. We can also add membrane units to further reduce the uh, energy consumption. And then based on the uh, different configurations that we have studied, we have also put in rules 
for example, if it's a ternary mixture uh, and uh, ordering the compounds in terms of boiling point, lowest is A, next is B, next is C. If we use a dividing wall column, compounds A and C can be pure products, but not B. If it is quaternary, there are different combinations possible. If it is five component mixtures, we have created all kinds of rules to figure out which configurations would be the best if dividing wall columns is used. With that, I will end the presentation by stating that the energy efficient intensified alternatives for base case design can be identified through rule-based method. Potential savings are significant enough to justify additional capital costs. Hybrid distillation option can be applied for retrofit problems as well as for new problems. The methods supported by data models and computational tools are ready for application in industry. Considering that chemical processes are among the highly energy intensive processes and within them distillation operations are usually the most intensive, significant energy reductions, uh, uh, energy consumptions can be obtained and therefore CO2 emissions, reduction in CO2 emissions can be achieved. With that, I finish my presentation. Thank you very much.